until its return. Destiny 2 Season of the Deep's brand new Taken themed rapid fire frame pellet shotgun that holds itself as a strand shotgun. Not that that part holds any importance really, because looking at its perk pool there is nothing here that particularly synergizes with that, but that's okay. Because the perks that it does have are good enough to make this shotgun <coughs> noticeable. And in this video I'll be going over multiple key points on why this shotgun is a fun pick. Now before we get into reviewing this weapon for me like this video subscribe to the page and hit that, that notification note now getting into the perk pool for the first and second column. These areas don't truly matter to me in terms of PvE, but if you must know, I went with Barrel Shroud for that bump in handling and stability, and Tactical Mag just for that increase in magazine size. This thing goes through ammo like no tomorrow. Now for the important perks, in the third column, we have two top contenders being Auto Loading Holster and Overflow, and one viable contender being Threat Detector. Overflow increases the magazine by double upon picking up special or heavy bricks, auto loading holster for that attack and retreat tactics, and threat detector just because being a shotgun and all, you'll naturally be knee deep in adds. Therefore you will get a boost in reload stability and handling for doing so. Now, as for our fourth column, we have three awesome perks. Mainly two awesome perks and then just one that's kind of a classic. This would be trench barrel, vorpal weapon, and cascade point. For the people that are into the classics, trench barrel is a solid choice. By simply meleeing an enemy, you will do 50% more damage for your next 3 shots. Never a bad option. And for the more brain dead plays, you can just opt into Vorpal. I find it as a classic, just 15% more damage passively to specifically bosses, mini bosses, and vehicles. And sometimes, it's the best you got on some weapons. Not for until it returns though. So now finally we get to my personal recommendation, Cascade Point. It's fun. And it's DPS is unmatched in terms of dump and run strategy. Just trust, we have the damage numbers to show. Now, Cascade Point has a couple ways of triggering. You can one, either defeat an enemy, or two, get precision hits. And this varies between what weapon you choose. But to give you the quick rundown, per damage value, for autos, traces, pulses, SMGs, and machine guns, you're looking at 8% per precision hit. For hand cannon, sidearms, and scouts, it will be 17.5% each precision hit. And for bows, linear, snipers, and shotguns, it will be 50% for each precision hit. Now there is an overlying issue with all of that. You know, the idea that RPMs vary across the archetypes in each weapon family, but who really cares when it takes only one enemy to defeat in order to proc cascade point, you know? This option is kinda only there to imply that you can use this perk for something like boss damage, when there are no adds around to quick proc the perk. It's the alternative option. And when we get into these damage numbers, you'll find out shortly that even though you can use it for damage, it's just unfortunately not the best option. So let's get into the damage numbers. For this testing, I kept the mag size at 7, and tested every Thing in terms of total damage on Carl. For when we get to Vorpal though, I simply took the base damage from Until It Returns and just added the 15% to it. Now for the base damage of this shotgun, one shot on Carl does 12 ticks of damage valued at 2,372, totaling one shot to being 28,464. Now for Cascade Point, this is the per shot damage value. For Vorpal and adding the 15% to that would total to 32,734 per shot. And for Trench Barrel, taking it straight from Carl himself, would be 12 ticks of 3,558, totaling to 42,696. And to throw in the occasional melee that is required for Trench Barrel to activate, it will be 10,246. Now, for all of these weapons, the reserve count will be the standard amount of 25 shots. No reserve mods here. And for the reload, it will be auto-loading holster. I just feel it's best to keep everything consistent for this type of stuff. Now in terms of total damage via the graph right here, trench barrel has the win. I think we all saw it coming, it's no surprise here. So we will be moving on to DPS now, arguably the more important damage type. Now moving on over to the DPS, we're gonna do something a little taboo here. We are at Tally in the Last Wish Raid, and we'll be using Ganora's Axe in terms of just proccing Cascade Point, and playing into the downtime for auto loading holster. For this testing I will be subtracting all damage that is done by Ganora's Axe, just so we can isolate the DPS of just until its return 
only, okay? Now, before we get into that though, here's the DPS in just one full magazine. If the strategy is attack and retreat tactics, which personally I found myself doing due to how much bosses love to slam the ground, this is what your DPS will look like. So if you're a hunter that has no source of immunity like well or bubble, this is what you're most likely gonna wanna see. Now, if you're a well lock or bubble titan that is able to just move in next door to the boss, bonus note, titans rock no backup plans for that 35% increase in damage to shotguns, and you can get all the ammo out. Now, this is where we will get into the full ammo DPS. Now, for trench barrel, I'm sure we can all see that the melee will be slowing the DPS down quite a bit, and I'm trying to avoid the extra melee for that last shell in the mag, for it will only lower the DPS more. And the time it takes to go from full to empty is 32.46 seconds. And moving over to Cascade Point, you can do the full to empty in a matter of 20 seconds and some change. Now, showing the DPS numbers here, you can see that they are borderline the same. Meaning, just opt in for Trench Barrel, if you want only the best results. But I would be lying to you if I didn't say that Cascade Point is just so much fun to use on until it returns. Now, I hope this video has given you just a little bit of insight on what to choose when trying to craft this weapon. And if it has, stick around for more of my based takes. Not that there were any takes to say in this video, but if you would like more insight on more weapons and possibly builds, you might want to check out a couple more of my videos. One of them should actually be on screen for you right now. I'll see you on over there. Peace.